you're in the right place. We are bouncing ahead of a festival of basketball tonight on the British Basketball League YouTube channel. Our first of three games tonight sees a much improved Surrey Scorchers taking on a potentially fatigued Cheshire Phoenix. The last time Cheshire visited Surrey, they won by just two points in a very tight encounter. Dan Routledge is alongside Ant Rowe. Take it away, fellas. Thank you very much, Jeanette. They might be even more fatigued. They've been on a bus all day, only just arrived Cheshire, so a very short warm-up for them. But we are set to go here at the sports park. It is Surrey Scorchers against Cheshire Phoenix and Ant basketball players, creatures of habit. One team with a short warm-up, one team with a long warm-up. Neither will be happy. Well, I don't know which way it's going to be. I was going to swing the advantage of, excuse me, but good things come to those who wait. We have been waiting for round two of this one, 103 to 101, an absolute cracker in the meeting back in October. Let's see who prevails victorious today. Let's have a look at the starting fives for today's game. Starting with the Scorchers, Cam Gooden injured his leg in the last game. He is out injured, joining Hunt on the sidelines. So Justin Robinson, back into the starting five, having done so well off the bench in recent weeks. At the other end of the floor, we've got a bit more use to the lineups from uh, Ben Thomas. Obviously, they've got Rye back now. He's still not 100%, still coming off the bench, but the likes of Jack and Rideau have been filling up the score sheet in his absence. And one guy you wanted to uh, have a look at, talking about filling up the score sheet, what a game he had last week in the win against Plymouth Paddy at Wang. The South Sudan International, second season with the Scorchers. He's had a slow start. He's had an injury uh, you know, provoked pre-season. But boy, is he finding form a monstrous 22.6 rebounds in the overtime win against Plymouth. He is the red hot Scorchers right now looking to inflict his form on this game. At the other end of the floor, Rideau has been playing really well for the Knicks. I really like him. He's a floor general. He's a point guard, attended the South Florida University, defensive player of the year, leading the British basketball league in steals he is their leader on the floor well tip off almost upon us we'll be right back after this here at the moment. Yeah, and if you're London, you still got to be worried about it as we see another Oh game. my goodness! The behind the back dive coming!
Welcome back to Surrey Sports Park. Ben Thomas and his team, a long day to get here, but they will be hoping to get off to a good start. Smart all round at the moment for Lloyd Gardner, but he will know that his team have an opportunity here against a team that played a couple of nights ago. Might not quite have their legs under them in the first few minutes. Important for Surrey to try and put their foot down right from the opening tip. Yeah, they want to jump on them from the start, both ends of the floor, high intensity. As you say, Dan, really important one for the Surrey Scorchers at home as well. They've lost some heartbreakers here on this court. Is this the close game they can get over the line? <laughs> Time will tell. Well, it's the Knicks who will get the opening possession of the uh, ball game. It's a bit static and they're late in the shot clock as a result. Skylar White, who played on this court, of course, a few years ago, reminding the Surrey fans what he can do. He steps off the bus, he locks and loads his first three-pointer and is nothing but the bottom of the net. Skylar White can knock them down from anywhere after anything. Well, they, he was popular during his time with the Scorchers, not so much after that play, you'd imagine. Pass deflected out of bounds for seconds on the shot clock. Well, Skylar White, a former employer, former player of the Surrey Scorchers, and we see this time and time again. When you go and visit, you know, your previous team, you have that little added motivation. Well, Jameson forced to heave up a three on the buzzer. That one's off the mark. We have seen him knock down a couple of threes uh, this season, but it's not what he earns his corn on most of the time. Didn't look as natural as Skylar Weiss, did it? No, he didn't. <laughs> Rido, well, that's a slow reaction, but not punished for it. Cheshire definitely look a little out of sorts here in the opening minute or so. Yeah, you're right, Dan. You can just see there's not really much by way of cohesion in the way that they're passing and moving with the basketball. Robinson fires up the three and he knocks down his first triple of the game. Well, Justin Robinson will be a guy that probably doesn't appreciate waiting another hour <laughs> for tip off and he shows us that he looks like a focused man ready my, to my take dude, control of this game. The game the other week where he first went to the bench, he had been starting early season, he was late getting here, that's why he went to the bench, but did so well coming off the bench that they kept that line up for a few weeks, but with good and injured. That's a shot clock violation, didn't get it away. Cheshire didn't even see that. You could see former player of the month, Aaron Roy, there on the bench. He was the one stood up shouting to his teammates, but they didn't hear him. That's a 24-second shot clock violation. Well, Robinson crosses midcourt. Wang behind the back to the rim, nice finish. Unbelievable. His confidence is oozing now into the game. You can see how cool and calm he was in that wraparound dribble behind the back. It's got him so much space towards the rim. Here he is again, no way through, but he's left all on his own. He throws it off the backboard to himself and lays it in. Goodness me, Paddy at Wang. The creative way to finish the play. He had no options. He has to pass the ball, of course. He picked up the dribble and gives himself an assist off the backboard. And Skylar White to the basket, and he finishes. Well, he's the one guy against his own team who's getting it done at the minute. Well, he hits a three-pointer now. This is an old-fashioned three-point play. Skylar White looking like he's ready, having stepped off that long journey to get down to Surrey. The question is how many of his other teammates are, are going to join him to the party because at the moment this Cheshire team look a little bit leggy, which is very understandable. This is the opportunity for Surrey Scorchers. They have to take advantage of this early, give themselves a nice lead, put additional pressure on this Phoenix team. Well, Wang finished the game at Plymouth last week so well. He started this game really well, and Josh Steele knocks down a three in the corner. Interestingly, Josh Steele was the guy that did a lot of the damage in this fixture in October. He had 20 points in that 103-101 loss to the Phoenix. 
little step away from Jack is off the mark. Rideau trying to get the rebound, and the foul is going to go against him. Well, we were talking about Paddy Wangi. He obviously forced the game into overtime last week, and you say smooth behind the back, and then not quite full Taj Green, but not far off it from last season, <laughs> throwing it off the backboard to himself. I don't think Coach Gardner will mind that in the slightest, as long as that ball goes through the hoop. Paddy at one with four early points. Robinson himself with five early points with the lay-in. Wow, what's a good move there. He sort of sliced the defense and then got in the danger zone. Left-hand finish, so his weaker hand. Nice play there from Justin Robinson. Field goal percentage tells you everything about the game so far. Nice pass. Oh, but it not finished by Stevens, and it's out of bounds for a Cheshire possession. Oh, that's a play he has to convert there, and the Quincy Rideau picking up player of the game in the Sky Sports matchup against Manchester Giants, where he had a big double-double of points and assists. He wasn't far, he wasn't too far off a quadruple double. He had a lot of steals in that game as well, rebounded a few. It was in the vicinity of, and that's something you never see, really. See too many triple doubles, let alone four categories in double figures. It's going to be a three second violation on Jameson, just got in the lane and never moved. He's allowed to stay in the painted area for more than three seconds. Yeah, pretty good call there from the, the officials as well. I'm certainly quick to call them out on when I feel that's not a good call, but yeah, I think Shaquan, Shaquan Jameson was in there for substantial time there. Here's Jack firing up for three and knocking it down. First points of the game for Maceo Jack. He's had such a stellar start to this British Basketball League campaign. He's the leading scorer, one of the leading scorers in the league. In fact, 19 points a game and Maceo Jack really is complete. Well, stolen away. You were talking about how well he does that. Rideau at the top of the show, how he takes the ball away from his opponents, doing it again there. Yeah, he's got a neat ability, uh, an awareness as well of where the ball is, and as you see, his stealing ability, getting his team two points on the fast break. Well, he's done it again, not quite. He not always oh, hurt himself, has he? Uh, just a bit slow to his feet, whether he rolled his ankle as he went for that loose ball. Yeah. And it's a good break as well. And here's the play before you. Hard to see on the angle. He sort of slips, doesn't he? Maybe a roll of the ankle. Looks like he's good enough to stay on court. An extra pass. Cooper resets. Lines one up. Well, you kind of expect that to hit the bottom of the net when he gets an open look. Rebound from Lawrence. Jack went the long way around there, didn't he? Very difficult to maneuver around the defender and then try and finish fading left with the right hand. Jameson from 17 feet. Wang trying to get the offensive rebound, but can't quite get it. Foul is called. 4.44 on the clock here. Surrey leading by one. We'll be right back after this break. Tyler White does well to keep the ball from going out of play. Still got the rebound, he passed it to me. So me and Ethan, as he was running down the court, was making like eye connection, like, I'm like, go, go, go. Running, 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 so then boom, put between my legs and just do it, and I just added no look to it. Um, my name is LaQuincy Rito. Um, I play for Chester Phoenix, I'm the point guard. Jazz music is on, um, it keeps you calm, helps you find that rhythm that you're looking for. And, you know, the, the term, I have that dog in me, that's me, honestly. Like. I won't back down from anybody, never been, never will. I would prefer doing the assist than scoring, because that's the thing about being a point guard, is like getting your teammates involved and, and keeping them happy and making yourself happy as well. My play style is about the risk and reward, so it's like, what's the point of like playing if you're not gonna take that risk? Because the risk is always gonna be with a bigger reward. I wanna be the best version of me. I'm making connection with my teammates and make brotherhood. The goal is to win. Go 
Welcome back to the sports park there to wait. The kids got to play one-on-one -on -one with Scorcher though, so that's always an upside if you were here watching. Well, Coach uh, Gardner, I just wonder whether he's thinking the way Surrey uh, started this game, that maybe they ought to have a bit more of a cushion than one point at this stage. Yeah, I think so, Dan. They haven't taken advantage of the first half of that quarter. Just a one-point game. Cheshire Phoenix just doing enough to hang around there. White flushed off the three-point line this time. Rideau kicked out to the corner. That's a tough shot. White with the rebound gets it and once again and once again he goes through the contact for another hand one. And Skylar White filling it up against his old team here. Look at the reaction as well. Skylar White. Feeling pretty good about himself right now and trying to will his teammates on. Because that's eight points personal. Now for Skylar White, opportunity to get make it nine. We're not even, we're barely over halfway through the first quarter. Well, he had a 34 point game for the Scorchers, which is his best in a British Basketball League contest. Well on pace for that right now. See if he can keep it going. Deflected out of bounds. Mohammed in a uh, discussion here with the official on the baseline. Well, Surrey's offense hasn't quite been as fluid. When you think back to the previous meeting between these two teams, 100 points each. It's a lot of points, Dan, and you're right, they haven't really hit the ground run. It's been a lot of individual play as well. And, and sorry, Scorchers, you know, Paddy Wang being creative and haven't really. And Justin Robinson, of course. Wang in the corner off the mark. Rebound pulled in by White. We know a little hesitation. Flips it behind the head, but it's turned over. Lawrence pushing. Cooper checks his feet and knocks down a three. Good offensive transition there. Sorry, Scorchers had numbers, and they found the open shooter. Cooper in the corner, knocks it down. Oh, I'm not sure where the defenders went there, but that was a wide open look for Stevens. Trying to force his way through, gets his own rebound and able to convert at the second attempt. Good persistence there from Mohammed. I think he wanted to, to pass the ball initially, didn't get through, but had the peace of mind to stay with the play. Offensive rebound, quick put back, nice play. That's another tough shot. There's been a few of those today. Christens is short. It's excellent on-ball defense there by Paddy and Wang as well. Remember, he picked up an early foul, so he's not going to want to pick up a second, which would take him to the bench, and that was straight up nice defense. Lawrence trying to get past White, doing so, and he's slapped from behind by Skylar White. That was a veteran move there from Andrew Lawrence. Probed and probed, looking for the right space. Oh, I think he's got fouled two, three times there. Andrew Lawrence. Good use there, and of course, Andrew Lawrence has battled with injuries over the last several seasons, and you forget about the, the high-caliber player he is, and a former Olympian in the Team GB in 2012, and his career took him all over Europe, and settled back into Surrey Scorchers now, and so far, so good for him. He's been healthy and he's been impacting games. Him and his colleague, Justin Robertson, showing us all why they've been at the top of their game for so long. It's a young rookie point guard who's out injured, not the uh, two old vets. <laughs> Both out there getting the job done. Stevens getting into the mid-range. Mistimed rebound by Steele, so she should get a second attempt. And that one just squeezed in. <laughs> I don't know how he got it to go when he did. Play there, Stevens. 
Bailey back to Cooper. Lawrence now. Again, trying to find some room out to Hogan Dengby for three. It's a bit short. Rebound Lawrence. Cooper will let it fly. And he strings a second three. Goodness me, Elliot Cooper stepping into that shot. Boy, did it go high arcing, but it fell straight through the rim there. Nice play. Here's Rye spinning baseline. Working his way back to fitness. Ulf with the rebound. Kicks out to Kristen and he knocks it down. Both teams benefiting from offensive rebounds. This time it's Cheshire who reply. Lawrence, time ticking down. That pass isn't quite to Cooper. He's ended up turning it over. Ulf kicks it out in front. Rideau will run it back and drop it in. Oh, exchange there of duties. This time Ulf with a leading pass into his point guard who ran the floor off a turnover from Surrey Scorchers. Oh, trying to give it back there. Still, he's ended up turning the ball over and Cheshire again with another run out. That's what they do not want to do against this Cheshire Phoenix team who are excellent in transition. Nine points from turnovers already for the Knicks. Here's Steele from behind the arc, and he knocks down a three. Great response there from Josh Steele. With Cheshire Phoenix, they lead the league in points from turnovers. It's just under 17 points per game that they benefit from as a result of their opposition turning the ball over. These two teams, two of the best at looking after the ball, though, so far this season. Right along the baseline gets caught. And with 0.2 seconds remaining, he will go to the free throw line. Great use of the pump thing there on the baseline from Aaron Ryan. Still, he's trying to come back from that injury, which put him out for pretty much the whole month of October after winning British Basketball Player of the Month in September. And that's an example there as well of getting your flow back because that's a that's an am one, isn't it, in September? Yeah, that's a play yeah. he finishes confidently. player who's uh, <laughs> used to be an injured I know <laughs> far too well how difficult it is not just physiologically but psychologically to regain your your form well we are uh, level here at the end of one we'll be back after this break here at the moment. Yeah, and if you're London, you still got to be worried about it as we see another Oh here. my goodness! The behind the back dive coming!
Welcome back to Surrey Sports Park, where Ben Thomas and the Cheshire Phoenix are level with Surrey Scorchers after the opening quarter, 25 points apiece. Possession arrow favoring the home team, so they'll get us underway for this second period. Well, just like that, Dan, we're on pace for 100 points uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. from each team again. It was a little stuttering in the first few minutes, but they've uh, got their rhythm now. Well, I could sense in, in your voice you're a little concerned that they wouldn't reach 100, but I'm pretty, pretty sure they will if they keep firing at this rate. I mean, neither teams are, 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 I would say, defense specialists. Well, that drop, yes, it will. It's a four-point play for Quinn Cooper. Knocked to the ground, he needed a friendly roll, but he's able to hit it. Well, that's what he's been brought in to do last year, played in the Finnish Professional League, and three-point shooting is something he's carved out. A niche skill all of his career. Landing zone foul by Aaron Ryan. Cooper benefits. Well, those are the sort of like momentum plays, aren't they? Those are ones where, yes, it's worth four points, but psychologically it does something to the crowd as well. They get up, the bench gets hyped. That's a good point as well. I mean, the crowd, remember, they've had to wait. Some of the uh, fans, majority of the fans, would have got there for a, a 5 p.m. tip-off. And, of course, the anticipation of this game starting. Well, you get three right back there from Maceo Jack. He's such a professional. Such a professional. Maceo Jack has been that player this year who's just had a breakout year so far. Combined 10 for 18 from the three-point line is pretty good. Here's Robinson trying to add to that, and he does. Justin Robinson with the three. Goodness me, threes being fired from everywhere. And this is the first and the second team in the British Basketball League of three-point attempts. So we're well, going to see a lot of shots, yeah, aren't well, we? Well, we'll not be clipping that one up for the highlights, <laughs> I think it's fair to say. Chris and uh, a little bit short on that one, but you're right, they uh, do take the most three-pointers in British basketball. They're only mid-table for percentage, but volume certainly at the top. And here's another one going up. Josh Steele in the corner. Off with the rebound. Josh got away with one there. That's an yeah, excellent yeah, look. That's a good look. Josh Steele in the corner, wide open. Jack putting it on the floor. Drops it out to uh, his teammate there. It's Robinson running back the other way. Hudson missed the three. Well, oh, Bailey trying to flip it in from behind. I think he thought the whistle was coming for a foul. Christian running it back, and that'll be a foul on Steele. Yeah, a bit of a wild one there from Elliot Bailey, and which leads to, again, Cheshire Phoenix want you to take rushed shots or turnovers because they're right down the other end of the floor. Josh Steele might be a little bit unfortunate for that one. I don't think he's trying to foul his hands are straight up, and he's trying to explain that to the referee. Wasn't enough in it for me, but I'm not the one making the decision. Well, you mentioned the fact that they lead the league in points from turnovers, Cheshire. They also lead the league in fast break points. The two are obviously usually tracked fairly closely, but that is something that Surrey don't get. They, they get half as many points in the fast break as Cheshire. That's a big difference. It's a, those sort of run out three points help keep the scoreboard ticking. Well, they're easy points, Dan. It's, it's things that can put points in a hurry. That's how you score 103 points in, in wins, because you're able to get those quick, easy points in transition. Robinson. Dengby hand in his face, what a shot that is! Wow, very difficult shot, and I thought it was a bad one. But I only thought that before I seen it hit the bottom of the net. Teohog and Denby, big shot. Here's Hudson. Rido is going to try and respond with three of his own off the mark. This has become a three-point shooting contest right now. Wang has it slapped away, but Rideau is called for the foul. 
Again, you've got to be so careful. If the Quincy Rideau is anywhere near you, and this is the shot before, look at that. Table good base, almost out of bounds. Hand in his face, didn't matter. I mean, this is a guy that's been playing over a decade in this British Basketball League. And big shots and plays, he's seen it all. Well, he's in the top 20 now for three-pointers made in British Basketball League history. Went past Doug Williams a couple of weeks ago. Shot clock being counted down for Josh Steele. He can't shake loose Maceo Jack. He's trying to find some room, and there was none. Jack with a tremendous defensive play. Suffocating defense there for Maceo Jack, which leads to an easy two points for the Cheshire Phoenix. Oh, keep talking about points from turnovers. That one was a run out. It'd probably go down as a block shot rather than a turnover. But uh, Jameson underneath can't force his way through. Chuck was an excellent there, good contest, made things difficult for Jameson who was stuck underneath the rim. Rideau, Christian in the corner, off the mark. Almost stolen away by Hudson, but he did enough to put that through the hands of Wang who couldn't keep it in bounds. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Ricochet there. I mean, that literally is a hand in his face. You could see Steele was trying to get further away to create the room. There wasn't any there, but a run back again for the Knicks. Shot were open for three. Front iron. Wang with the rebound. He sees, well, I thought they'd got back initially, but they just left Jameson there. No, good. Running the floor, the big man, that's what you want to do. Head down, get to the rim. Teammate found him, but Jameson gets an easy two. Jack for three, halfway down, but it comes out. Well, it's, it's a good miss, though, Dan. You know, when you're missing like that, you know that the next one's got a pretty good chance of going in. Here's Ogundenby in the near corner, and same result, bottom of the net. Wow, it's it, Ogundenby. Sometimes he's not even thinking before he lets it go, gets it to the go again. Well, four minutes gone in the second quarter, and Surrey now starting to uh, assert themselves here. They've opened up an eight point lead, which is the biggest of the ball game, and Ben Thomas forced into using an early timeout here in the second quarter. But as you say, they've had some good looks. The first one, they defended Teo pretty well. I mean, I don't know you could do much more than that to uh, prevent him. Well, maybe this, is a maybe guy this one, they, a little late, but it's still a decent challenge. Yeah, look, he's a guy who's in his ninth consecutive season with the Surrey Scorchers, so he's he's got volume shots up in this, arena, in, this, in, this in this court before, Dan. So, you know, he's a guy... High on confidence right now, two three-pointers for him, and again, he's not going to be phased by the by the occasion. He's seen this, been there and done it so many times before. Well, nine three-pointers already for Surrey. In that game, they won here against Manchester. They obviously hit 20, 20 or 40 uh, in that one, and they're more than on pace to go past that here today. Dengby. A couple of threes for six points. They've got 18 points off the bench already. Surrey. I mean, this isn't something we haven't seen before. Surrey, you know, carved themselves an excellent lead. Remember, this is the team that go on the record books for, for losing the 23 point lead that they had in, in Leicester Riders. Also in the, the overtime win yeah. in Plymouth, they were up big down in Plymouth and they let that lead slip. So, you know, I, I think in the back of your mind, you're always thinking, is, is Surrey Scorch going to have that self-destruct button or will Cheshire be able to apply more pressure? Right. Three is off the mark. Chagua can't keep it in play. In play. Chagua, the player who's growing in confidence and you can see he's more comfortable in his British Basketball League surroundings now. He had a good game as well in October against the Surrey Scorchers. 20-point well, game for him. 
Didn't make it all the way past Jack Hudson, waiting for Jack on the trail with the two-handed flush. So good in the open floor, aren't they? Nice spacing, players rim running, and Macy or Jack this time, the beneficiary of Jack Hudson pass. Well, they're in double figures for points off turnovers. Robinson takes a tough shot and makes a difficult one. Skyler White just steps into the three. the end there as he went down the lane looking for the foul wasn't yeah, he? He was. Never came. Hudson loses the dribble that one will go out of bounds Surrey Scorchers with an eight point lead here at this sports park 440 to go in the second quarter timeout call we'll be back after this break Skyler White does well to keep the ball from going out of play. Still got the rebound, he passed it to me. So me and Ethan, as he was running down the court, was making like eye connection, like, I'm like, go, go, go. Running, 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 so then boom, put between my legs and just do it, and I just added no look to it. Um, my name is LaQuincy Rito. Um, I play for Chester Phoenix, I'm the point guard. Jazz music is, um, it keeps you calm, helps you find that rhythm that you're looking for. And, you know, the, the term, I have that dog in me, that's me, honestly. Like. I won't back down from anybody, never been, never will. I would prefer doing the assist than scoring, because that's the thing about being a point guard, is like getting your teammates involved and, and keeping them happy and making yourself happy as well. My play style is about the risk and reward, so it's like, what's the point of like playing if you're not going to take that risk? Because the risk is always going to be with a bigger reward. I want to be the best version of me. I'm making connection with my teammates and make brotherhood the goal is to win. Welcome back to the sports park. Maceo Jack with eight points. Cheshire Phoenix with 11 points from turnovers and 12 fast break points. That's the way they've kept the scoreboard ticking over here in the first half. And they haven't taken away the three from Surrey. It's a very easy inbound play for Skylar White to get himself uh, into double figures. Yeah, it was done as needs to be. More resistance there from Surrey Scorchers, and again, they not only want to preserve this lead that they've got themselves, they want to build on this and ensure they've got a good advantage going into the second half. Jameson trying to find room past White, can't get there. Skyler White is an underrated defender in that sense, isn't he? He's not a defense specialist, but his length and his strength certainly prevents guys from getting easy baskets. Well, the host up. Looked like he was beaten there, but somehow the shot was short and he came away with the ball. <laughs> it was a poor miss, but you're right. Sometimes you've got to be first to react, and Mohammed was. Robinson out to Lawrence, catch and shoot, and all string. And that is 10 first half three-pointers for the Surrey Scorchers. Wow. It's just great decision as well from Justin Robinson and Andrew Lawrence, the confidence as well to just step into that one. Well, they've got uh, 30 points from the three-point line, three points from the free-throw line. They've only made six two-point shots in the game. And if they drop it down... Yeah, yeah, welcome to modern basketball. That's, that's it. The, that's that's it. the way to play, isn't it? Free throws and... Uh, Three point is tipped in. There we go from Chagua. Oh, Ethan Chagua's done really well there. Used his six for eight frame there to tip that ball home. Just uh, going to be a timeout called here. 
3.26 to go. Surrey leading 45-38 here with 3.26 on the clock. So Jack and Co. Their issue is defensively at the minute. We we worried about their legs maybe a little offensively, but they've had that. We've seen them getting uh, out in transition. We've seen them knocking down a few shots, but the problem is they haven't taken the three-pointer away. No, and uh, you know it, it's a, they're a unique team in that they're they're very good at defensive aspects of the game so your high pressure hands in the passing line and anticipating steals but they're not excellent at half court uh, set defensive team and what i mean by that is again you're not taking away threes you're not uh, a team that's gonna um, stop teams from scoring or disrupt them too much because at the moment sorry scorchers have got some very open easy looks Lawrence. Nice little penetration from Wang, drops it off to Jamison for the lay-in. Nice play there, and the active big man Jamison staying available on the baseline. Nice finish from him. Three second violation caught against Chagua. Wow, 1-1 one, one now. Early one in the game caught on Jamison this time, Chagua posting up in the paint. Can't stay in there for three seconds or more. Violation. Three to play. Sorry. Closing in on a half century before half time. Wang. Driving in under all sorts of pressure, and he will go to the line for two. Well, Paddy has been looking for that, hasn't he? You yep. saw him a few times attack the rim aggressively, but not get the foul call. So this one made sure he went straight into the defenders there and not quite sure who gets and maybe a little bit of both Skylar White comes over <laughs> this is a player we're talking about informed players Paddy at Wang will be one that we have to watch closely, an incredible performance from him in that overtime win against Plymouth. He had zero points at the start of the fourth quarter and finished with 22, but more importantly, the game defining moment, which got it into overtime. Without Paddy at Wang, there is no win down to no, Plymouth. No, and obviously it was the six points that got them uh, back in as well prior to that. I was talking to Lloyd Gardner about him, and he said he basically had no, no nothing in the summer because of the operation and no real preseason. So he's kind of almost in preseason now, and we're starting to see him hit his uh, form right in front of us the last couple of weeks. Mohammed driving in all the way to the basket Vin rolls it in 50 on the board with still two to half time <laughs> zero interior resistance there from the Cheshire Phoenix poor help defense didn't get over and Mohammed says thank you very much Jack off the mark for three and you wonder as the lead gets bigger whether that's when the sort of psychological bus legs come in for uh, Cheshire Rido running into traffic and turning it over. Wang in transition. Wang didn't quite get enough on that, but it's going to be a foul on Skylar White. That'll be his second. Again, I think Wang's been so positive in his attacking of the rim. Skylar White oh, doesn't touch him, does he? It's a difficult call there to take, I think, if you're Skylar White. Well, it's a 12-point lead for the Surrey Scorchers. 1.36 to go. And say 50 points in the 
first half is a really good return for them. But you talked about it before, there's no safe lead. Don't forget, coming up shortly, half an hour or so, Leicester Riders, Newcastle Eagles, part three of uh, that rivalry. Obviously, it was very tasty the last two teams, last time the two teams met. And then at eight o'clock, Sheffield Sharks and Manchester Giants, the old Battle of the Roses. Yorkshire against Lancashire, 8 p.m. tip-off for that one. It's a historic reference there, Daniel Rutledge. Very good. Thank you. A historian deep down, aren't you? Well, not really. Inside and outside uh, of British basketball? Yeah, maybe, maybe only inside. <laughs> I have heard of the War of the Roses, but... Wouldn't claim in-depth knowledge on it. As uh, the two teams make their way back out onto court. Well, it happened a little bit before the British basketball league was established, yeah, yeah, didn't yeah. it? You can't fit it in a spreadsheet <laughs> either. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> well, last action before that timeout was the foul against White. So Wang on the line, looking to extend a 12-point lead. It's about 75% through his uh, British Basketball League career from this distance. Yeah, it makes both of them. Well, that's probably his last contribution of the half. He sits down. He's had a good first half. Yeah, he has. Very positive. Hasn't always went his way, but he's remained consistent. I mean, that goes to show his mental toughness as well. If you think back to the game against Plymouth, again, zero points. He had a bit of a torrid time as well. Calls not going his way, missed shots, but mentally stayed locked in, and, well, we know what happened. The shot clock never started ticking on that one. So the referee just stopping play and asking them to reset it down to 20. Around the screen from Ulf. Trying to find a little bit of room to work with, get some contact, and he will go to the foul line for two shots. Yeah, not the best of offenses from a team perspective, quite stagnant. But what you do have is a player like Qu Le Quincy Rideau, who's usually really good at creating for his teammates. I mean, realize the he would have to make something happen himself there. Short on the first free throw, much to the, the line of the home fans. 4.3 rebounds, four assists so far for Rideau. That one looked a little short. It had enough to get over the front of the rim. A type of player that can fill up a statue yeah. in a hurry. He's such a multifaceted player. Can affect the game in so many different ways, including the defensive end. Needs the British Basketball League and steals. Well, that was the right idea, but probably a little too much zip on that pass. Or well, Jameson, though, does tap his chest to say it's a good pass. Well, that, My fault. that shows me that, that that was a play that was drawn up mm. or at least suggested by the coach. And Jameson just wasn't ready on that occasion. Well, there's going to be another free throw for Rideau here as he goes through the contact and will shoot an extra bonus free throw. Oh, the Quincy Rideau starting to impact the game here now and take it over. I mean, this was the guy that inflicted the most damage in this fixture in October. In the 103-101 win for Cheshire in 27 points, 12 assists. Big game from Rideau. Perspiration just being cleared off the floor before the free throw. Well, we know he likes his jazz music. Maybe he's that additional couple of hours on the bus listening to jazz yeah, music. Just, just chilling out. Got yeah. him in tune with what's going on in the flow of this game. Well, that 
was uh, the whistle blew before that shot, which is why it wasn't counted, but he misses the real one anyway. Space for Mohammed. Penetrate kick, Cooper for three. Well, you could see the bench all thought that was in. They were all up. Cooper's one of those guys, when he gets the ball, you think he's going in. He's a volume three-point shooter. Right, driving in, throws it out to the corner. So I assume that'll be a sideline ball because it's only the team fourth. Be an end line ball. Bailey in for Jameson. Again, they get a good look up an end line ball. Can't convert this time. Bailey wraps it up. That'll be a hell ball, and Cheshire will get possession on the arrow. Oh, good hustle from Elliot Billy, and that's what you're going to get from him. Comes on court, makes the most of his minutes, plays with passion. I mean, this is a, a, a British guy who went over to develop his trade over in Canadian college system. Back again, he watched Guildford Heat, now known as sorry Scorchers, back when he was a, a young kid. So to do full circle and come back round and now be able to represent Surrey Scorchers must be a proud moment for himself. Oh, a cheeky one off the back from Rideau, and he lays it in. <laughs> it was indeed, Dan, and the Quincy Rideau, accustomed to providing his teammates with assists, but kind of give himself one there. There's Lawrence. Out to Cooper. Time ticking down. Steele on the buzzer. Halfway down, but out. And that is the end of the first half. Well, it's been... Better for Surrey than it has for Cheshire, but I don't think Cheshire will be too disappointed with the position that they find themselves in. We'll be in the half, we'll break it all down after this break. Kenzie out in front, two blue shirts back. Oh my! Really attacking the rim and flushing it home. Pinson, fancy dribble. Out to Asbury, falling off balance for three, all string. Pretty play from Leicester. Couldn't convert. DeBose out to Whelan, open for the lead. Patrick Whelan back to back threes, and Caledonia are ahead. It had to be Pat Whelan. Steele for the win. No, he ran off. Oh, you wag. Wag is jumping in on the buzzer. Just not capitalizing here at the moment. Yeah, and if you're London, you still got to be worried about it as we see another Oh here. my goodness! The behind the back dive coming! Take a 
to the top even when the ball drops, my man. Welcome back to our coverage of the British Basketball League. Ant Rowe and Daniel Routledge with you for this one. And Surrey Scorchers on top at the moment. Have they got a big enough lead, do you think, from what they've done in the first half? Well, we said that the, the start was really important. They needed to jump on the Cheshire Phoenix, who are still trying to shake off their legs, having, having that extended travel time, get into the arena. And they've done that. I think they've weathered a little bit of a push there from Cheshire as well. But it has to be the shooting, doesn't it? Surrey Scorchers have just been on fire from the perimeter. Well, let's have a look at the numbers now. And it is the three-point uh, volume that you expect from Surrey, but the accuracy as well with it today. Ten first half, three pointers, over 50% uh, from uh, that distance and 50% from two. The good shooting numbers, and you look, we talk about the legs, four of 17 at the other end from three. Incredible shooting numbers, Dan. This is video game <laughs> nice, isn't it? It's unbelievable. 55% from the, the three-point line. And they, where the Surrey Scorchers have gotten a little bit of trouble with some of those turnovers. Those six turnovers, which isn't a lot, it's below their averages, but they feel so much more because the Cheshire Phoenix have been so much, uh, so, you know, has punished them on the other end well, of the floor. 13 points from those 16 turnovers. Let's have a look back at the action in the first half here. And Skylar White against his old club getting them off to uh, a decent stop. Maybe, sorry, we're a little slow, but once Wang got going, then the whole team seemed to flow as well. Well, you mentioned the whole team, and you're right, the distribution of, of scores that they've got. You know, Robinson with 10 points, Cooper with 10 points, but everyone else has chipped in. Wang was seven. you got Ogden Denby with six. You've had uh, sources of offense from, from different places, and this is you know leading the league in steals this year. Riddell and out to the races. Well, Cheshire hanging on a little bit I mean I know it's only a nine a nine point game but there's been times where you thought oh they might be in a bit of trouble but every time you did they got something like this a free run out fast break points oh and that's what Ben Thomas will be telling them look you know we've had a, a testing day so far in, in getting to the location but you know this is still a ball game just nine points and we've seen Surrey Scorchers leads disintegrate in moments so Cheshire Phoenix will feel pretty um, optimistic I think uh, going into the second half well they will that's I mean that is the the point of it really is not been at their best the other team shot 55% from three, we're only down nine. No, of course, Dan, there's, there's certainly areas that the Cheshire Phoenix can improve as well. And if they get a couple more guys there, Hart, Maceo Jack could be big for them as well in the second half. He's uh, he's contributed. The key will be stops. They've got to make things more difficult for the Surrey Scorchers. Well, this game is still in the balance here at halftime. Let's have a look back at some of the highlights from these two teams' previous games, starting with Surrey against Plymouth. Joe Hart stolen away. Wiley in the open court. Wiley with the two-handed throwdown. Faulkner fires up the three and he knocks it down. He was a guy you could help off and didn't have to guard from beyond the perimeter. Here's a guy you do have to guard from beyond the perimeter. You cannot lose number 27 when you're playing the Surrey Scorchers. Nice pass. Wiley with the two-handed flush. That would spinning one way, then the other. Nice finish. That's a tough move. Johnson. Here's Faulkner. Stepping through and tossing it in. Let's kick back out. Shot clock needs to go up. Green gets it away in time and knocks it down. They're off and running. Faulkner can't convert. The tipping is good, though, by Atwood. Faulkner for three, front rim, there's Levi to tip it in, and he's fouled! Jameson is open, he fires up the three, and he makes it! Wang is fouled by Atwood, that will count. Down to Atwood underneath, he's fouled, and the basket is good, Plymouth are ahead! Hesitation. What a tough shot that is. It's a four point lead. Wang to the rim, lays it in. It's a one point game. 
Robinson. Steel for the win. No, he removed you Wang. Wang is jumping in on the buzzer. Here's Wang with the step back, and he continues to fill it up here. Green steps into three. And the follow is tipped home. Spencer Levi again on the offensive rebound. Wang looking to attack. Drives inside, kicks out, steal for three. Got it! Looking to attack again. He steps back for three. Got it! What a shot from Paddy Wang. Time expires here, and Surrey Scorchers have dodged a bullet. They've won the game in overtime against the Plymouth City Patriots. Manchester in the opening three minutes of this game. A size mismatch there. Nice cut to the basket from Jack, who finishes off the glass. That's a tough shot. 35 points in the quarter isn't over. Lewis trying to reply. He strings a three. Lewis ticking down the shot clock, getting in. Knocked away by Ulf. Cheshire have it. Three on none, and it'll be an easy jam in transition. Christian with the throwdown. Lawton comes back the other way. Nice move. It's White again. His three point shot isn't gathering any dust. Hudson's going to throw up the alley oop, and good catch and finish from Jack. Callum Jones with a very trademark Callum Jones shot. Nice drive. Oh, my! What a rejection that is from Lawton. Hudson. Oh, they've left Jack open again for three. And Cheshire has scored 66 points in the first half. Probably a little optimistic. See, oh my goodness. Here's Walsh doing what he does yes. best. Manderson in the transition. I was just saying how he runs the floor well. Borsier drops it off and a two-handed throwdown. Lewis waits for Anderson to come around the screen. And Anderson knocks down the three. We don't need to take his time here, don't go too soon. He drops it off to Wolf to get some points. Walsh tried to find some space, there wasn't any, got blocked, three on one. Cheshire with numbers and Cheshire running the floor as they did in the first half. Here he is to the basket. He's saying, don't forget about me, I haven't gone anywhere. He's gonna fire up on the buzzer and that will do it. Cheshire Phoenix, they came out scored 116 points. They know how to get it done. There's a little bit of chatter. I and as I say, this is what happens in yeah. a derby game. As you can see, Roberton involved in there. And I think at this point, just go to the locker room. Yeah. <laughs> just get out the way. Kenzie out in front, two blue shirts back. Oh my! Really attacking the rim and flushing it home. Pinson, fancy dribble. Out to Asbury, falling off balance for three all string. Pretty play from Leicester. Couldn't come back. DeBose out to Whelan, open for the lead. Patrick Whelan back to back threes, and Caledonia are ahead. It had to be Pat Whelan. Steel for the win. No, he removed the Wang. Wang is jumping in on the buzzer.
Just not capitalizing here at the moment. Yeah, and if you're London, you still got to be worried about it as we see another Oh here. my goodness! The behind the back dive coming! Welcome back to Surrey Sports Park. Busy week in the British Basketball League. Cheshire with a big win on Thursday night in the Northwest Derby. Caledonia made to work hard, but in the end, one by 10 down in Plymouth. A big third quarter from the London Lions saw them run away from the Bristol Flyers. They're uh, gonna get underway in about 15 minutes time in Leicester, where the Eagles are in town. They're gonna tip off at Sheffield at 8 10. We will get to that as soon as we can. And then tomorrow, a double header Bristol Flyers, 3 p.m., and uh, Plymouth City Patriots at 6 p.m. for those two games. And then don't forget, coming up in January, the trophy gets underway. Two groups of five battling it out for the first three weeks. And then last weekend, we've got a final four semi finals and final on the same weekend at the Utilita Arena in Birmingham. Full information on the British Basketball League.com website. Well, Lloyd Gardner, I asked him about the trophy. He's like, I'm thinking about tomorrow. And so far, tomorrow is going all right because his team are up by nine at the half and they have possession to get us underway. It's a coach's answer. Yeah, One game at a yeah, time. Yeah. Well, Jameson, everything but the catch there, I think. A big juggle, but he couldn't keep it in. It's been a bit of a mixed game so far for Jameson. A couple of those just lose control only one rebound for him as well he leads the British Basketball League in rebounds a, not too many offensive rebounds no, I was about to say they haven't missed any <laughs> shots how is he going to get offensive rebounds but there's a, a shot being made from Stevens in the corner for three and cuts it to six big one from Stevens I think Stevens is one of the players for me that looks like he's had a long journey here he's not been 100% focused his shot's been a little off he was just one for six before that shot so you know second half sometimes when players get into the game they feel a little bit more comfortable so see if players like him are able to to be a little bit more productive now for this Cheshire Phoenix team Rideau call for his second personal foul Robinson gets it back big screen from Jameson Robinson Fires it up on the shot clock buzzer off the back of the ring. There's, there he is on the offensive glass, Jameson, batting it back to a teammate. Such a menace, isn't he? <laughs> this time. Gets his team another offense, which they will have to reset. Well, Rido with a uh, second quick foul in a row here in the third quarter, going after steals. That's three in total. Well, he says he likes high risk, high reward, and yeah. that's the risk you run, isn't it? When you're leaving the league in steals, you're always looking for it, but what you're essentially doing is you're putting yourself in the opportunity to pick up more fouls. Skylar White getting his foot in the way there, so that'll reset the shot clock to 14. Up 
Robinson gets it into Wang, who spins along the baseline. Extra pass to Mohamed. Steal. Nice attack, but what a block from Skylar White. Skylar White coming across there. Perfect timing. Jack fires up the three. Rebound Mohamed. He just got an opportunity here. Yeah. Robinson for three. He knocks it down, and the lead is out to nine now. But this being just like that, <laughs> the opportunity gets a little bit less appealing. Justin Robinson hits the first three points for Scorchers third quarter. 11 now in the game. That will be a foul as uh, Maceo Jack drives to the basket. Well, he's a player who just plays the game the right way. He has basketball flowing through his veins. His mother is a head coach of Syracuse University women's team. So I'm sure he's got to call her after games, get the emotional support of your mother, but also the critique of a yeah, head coach. Head coach. Robinson with 13 points. Sorry, as I say, 11 three-pointers already. They average 11 three-pointers per game. And that is uh, number two in the league behind London in terms of makes. Jameson loses the dribble. He's holding. Didn't see him at all in the first half. And he's going to fire up the three. Well, that's not the best shot selection you've ever seen. His steal running it back for two. We said they don't get much in transition. There's a couple. Well, that poor shot selection with a long rebound resulting in a left-hand finish from Josh Steele there. And you're right, Dan, it was not a good decision. And Cam Holden, again, you've got to think, this affects the rookies more so. They're not used to traveling on the same day sometimes, let alone for extended periods. Shogwell with the turnaround, back eye. And, and a few moments ago, you said there was a chance for Cheshire, you feel there's a chance here for Surrey to put it away, and Wang puts it down with the big jam. And they've opened up an 11-point lead. And Paddy at Wang, just like I was, sees the opportunity for his team to get on top there. Paddy at Wang is that man right now for the Scorchers. Nine points personal, but down the more concerning thing for me, for the Cheshire Phoenix, is Paddy at Wang that slows it down. It's one simple crossover which gets him all the way to the rim. Really poor on ball defense there from Holden. And then even worse, help defense there from his teammate. Paddy and Wang, those skies to the rim for the finish. Well, it's very much a moment here for Surrey Scorchers. That's why Ben Thomas has called a halt to play. You just get the feeling like Surrey have an opportunity to blow this game away in the next three or four minutes if they can maintain this and if Ben can't turn the ship at the other end of the floor. Now we talk about the close encounters that this Surrey Scorchers team have had. They've been on the, the end, the losing end of it more often than not, two in seven currently, but what those close games do give you, it gives you that, gives you that, that, that internal grit and you know players like Paddy Wang have had to be even more so patient this season recovering from injury he hasn't been the same player you know, even to the point at some of the games this year you you question if it's still the same player from from that of last year but boy have we seen Paddy at Wang the last couple of games plays like that will certainly lift Surrey Scorchers into playoff position well they haven't been in the top eight since December 2020. Sorry, that's how long it's been, but they've got a chance here as Stephen's shot rims out. There's a foul court against Holden on the uh, rebound. But Surrey will move into the playoff places if they win here today for the first time in almost three years. Oh, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? They've, the fans have had to wait three, almost three years and another hour for tip-off. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. 
is Steele, top of the key, back iron. There's still a long way to go in this game. Well, good things come to those yeah. who wait, Daniel, and some of those Surrey Scorchers fans have waited extremely patiently. Maceo Jack is tipped off the ring by Wang, but only as far as Jack. What you don't want to do is let Cheshire hang about. That's going to be an offensive foul against Jack. Just get the sense if it's close at the end, Cheshire have got the muscle memory to win it. So sorry, might want to put it away before that. Yeah, but you got to remember, you know, this. we've got a good sample of this very fixture from October the 7th and that close game, 103-101, went in the favour of Phoenix down. So I don't, I don't know, there's no script when, when you come to these two teams. And Macy Jack, you see the frustration on his face there as well as he leaves the, the court after picking up that offensive foul. And I think that's a, a theme that's flowing through the Cheshire Phoenix at the moment, and that's frustration. I think frustration of the whole day, but also this Surrey Scorchers team is making things very uncomfortable for them. Mohamed back to Jameson. Putting it on the floor, getting all the way to the basket, drawing the foul and laying it home. That's a really good decision from Jameson. We've seen him sometimes take those ill-advised three-point shots, but this time, puts it on the floor and gets a route all the way to the rim, and the concerns keep mounting up for this interior defense from the Cheshire Phoenix. It's non-existent. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? They've just seemingly, repeatedly got to the basket, got to the basket, got to the basket, and having knocked down all those threes in the first half, it's very much been two-point shots that have kept the scoreboard ticking in this half. Well, 44% free-throw shooter. That will not be one of Shaquan Jameson's strengths, but... Rye going hard, and Ulf showing what he can do on the offensive rebound. Well, we've got two of the best in the business in David Ulf and Shaquan Jameson. Offensive rebounds is what those guys do, and Aaron Rye again. This is a play finishes in September. But his teammate David Oaf able to clean up the, the mess for the two. And able to convert the free throw. That's only 10. As I say, sorry, you get the feeling. Don't want Cheshire hanging about here because they're a dangerous team down the stretch. The Phoenix. Here's Robinson. Shot clock down to five. Steele again beats his man, but this time it's Ulf who's there to get in the way and take the charge. Well, good substitution for Ben Thomas to bring David Ulf in the, in the game. He's already rewarded them with an offensive rebound put back. But this time, look, he is there. Interior defense, he comes over. He's there in time. Josh Steele commits the offensive foul. an illegal screen from David Ulf. That isn't a good play by him. 4.52 to go in the third. Still a double-figure lead for Surrey. Timeout call. We'll be back after this. as well to keep the ball from going out of play. Still got the rebound, he passed it to me. So me and Ethan, as he was running down the court, was making like eye connection, like, I'm like, go, go, go. Running, 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 so then boom, put between my legs and just do it, and I just had a no look to it. Um, my name is LaQuincy Rito. Um, I play for Chester Phoenix, I'm the point guard. Jazz music is, um, it keeps you calm, helps you find that rhythm that you're looking for. And, you know, the, the term, I have that dog in me, that's me, honestly, like, I won't back down from anybody, never been, never will. I would prefer doing the assist than scoring, because that's the thing about being a point guard, is like getting your teammates involved and, and keeping them happy and making yourself happy as well. My play style is about the risk and reward, so it's like, what's the point of like playing if you're not gonna take that risk? Because the risk is always gonna be with a bigger reward. I wanna be the best version of me. I'm making connection with my teammates and make brotherhood. The goal is to win. Go! 
welcome back to the sports park where Ben Thomas was given a technical foul for complaining, very unhappy during the interval, still having a conversation with one of the officials. Well, now there's some debate about the free throw. But if it was a technical foul, anybody can take it. Well, he doesn't look very happy either way, does he? No, he does not. And again, you don't know how much frustrations are building up as well from the delayed travel. Oh, nice pass. Beautiful assist. Justin Robinson, he points to the bench as if to say, that was a good draw up, coach. Very good. Execution on point. I like what he did there off the screen. He dragged the defenders so far away from the key, so there's such a, a big gap of space for Jameson to, to drive. Right, getting into the key, slowing it down and laying it in. That's what we've been accustomed to seeing in Aaron Rye. And the quicker that he can get back to his producing numbers so far, and 20 points a game, eight rebounds, four and a half assists. Such a big piece of the puzzle here for this Cheshire Phoenix. It's off the back uh, side of the iron from uh, Steele. Holden looking to back down Steele, spinning, overcooking it, tapped out, but once again the Knicks get it right inside. Second attempt is good, and the foul is on Steele. Wow. Didn't quite have the lift on that initial shot, did he? But he stays with the play. Look at that short, but first to react in between a sandwich of Surrey Scorcher players. But it's Rye who comes up trumps. Big finish. Well, you can see that he's uh, a fair way short of what he was at the beginning of the season, but he's finding ways to contribute for his team here. Well, he's an intelligent basketball player, Ivy League graduate, Dartmouth University. Neural science major, and he's a, a guy who plays the game the right way, an intelligent way. Neuroscience Neuro wasn't your major, was it, Anne? It was not, no. <laughs> I have to focus just to say it. <laughs> Deflected out of bounds. There's a bit of chatter here. Holden into the face with Robinson. Referees might have to chat this over to see if there's anything else to uh, sort out. Let's see. Of course, there's a clash of legs there before the uh, out of bounds, and then debate about the call, and then you can see them getting, oh, was there a little movement towards there? Holden. Well, I'm not going to say the sport, but if that was a different sport, you know that guy would have been on the floor rolling around. Yeah. So that sportsmanlike foul called against him. For uh, you can see this sort of signal there from the referee to suggest it a head movement involved in that. <laughs> Well, he's saying he came to me, but doesn't mean you can just watch the heads here. He's come out and said something. No, there's not a, a load in there. anything there at all I still don't quite figure out what the initial argument was about I think there was a clash of legs and then whether they were arguing about whether that clash of legs was a deliberate foul or not I'm not sure but because the unsportsman like foul has gone against Holden it's two free throws for Robinson, and he makes both of them. 15 points now for Justin Robinson, leads all scorers.
Robinson finds Bailey. He can't finish with the left hand. Rye gets it to all. Back out to Rye. Oh, it's through the hands of Rideau. Wack says thank you very much. He's running the floor, kicks to the corner, but stolen away and kept in bounds. Good play from Kristen. It was good hustle to get back. I thought Wang made the wrong decision. I think he's been so aggressive going to the rim. He should have elected to attack the rim there after that Euro step. Oh, he saw Cooper, didn't he? And thought well, he could get three here. Rice sends his man to the floor. It's going to be a flop warning for Bailey. Rideau for three. Rattles it in on the shot clock buzzer. <laughs> they used every second of that, 24 seconds. Good decision not to force it initially. And the Quincy Rideau knocks it down. Robinson over to Mohammed for three. He's off the mark. And they've only made one three, I think, in the second half. To making 10 at half yeah. time. It's a big drop off, isn't it? Rideau trying to make two in a row, and he does. Wow. Just like that. Cuts this lead to four. And this is the dangerous part now because Cheshire Phoenix are going to have belief. They're going to have confidence. And a guy like a Quincy Rideau can propel a team forward, which he has done. The other thing they're going to have is they're going to have that feeling of, oh, things are conspiring against us, the unsportsmanlike foul. Ben Thomas just having got a technical a few moments ago as well, where you've got that sort of world against us mentality and that thing to prove people wrong. No, I totally agree, Dan, and that can be very powerful as well, that, that collective mindset of us against the world. And they've done incredibly well. You know, I can't explain how difficult must have been today they come to the arena so late that tip-offs delayed a whole hour the warm-up routine is reduced it affects you mentally as well as, as well as physically and here they are now four-point game with an opportunity to beat the sorry scorch and this is a big game for both teams as well you know when you look at phoenix position on the table the six and four if they can get seven wins here today they get themselves up now with the elite three four in this league and complete contrast there you've got sorry scorchers looking to get in the top eight for the first time since december 2020 so you know, must win games really for both clubs with a magnitude of important importance for very different reasons but nonetheless very important for both teams to pick up a win here well, back underway here in the third Lawrence, Cooper coming off the screen, knocks, uh, fires up the three, but can't hit. It's good luck, isn't it? Out of yeah. time, out just doesn't connect, but it's a good look. Right, back out to Rideau. Shot clock getting low. Right, all on his own. Leaves the three short. Lawrence will watch that go out of bounds for a Surrey possession. Yeah, I think Aaron Roy just needs more time. It's a good shot. He had a lot of, he had a lot of uh, room space. Again, worryingly for Surrey Scorchers to leave a player of his caliber that open, but he isn't able to benefit from it. Wang gets past Rideau. Shot is way short though. Rideau too strong off the glass, and that was out off Cooper's hand last, so it'll stay with Cheshire. Just 14 points in this third quarter for Surrey. They scored 25 in the first, 27 in the second quarter significant reduction there in their output in this third quarter it's the three point shots that have disappeared for them bailey not quite straight on there i think and that's why the foul's gone against him
Rye makes the first, trying to make it a two-point game here. Second one's a little bit short. Bailey able to grab the rebound. Well, they're underway in Leicester, Newcastle, off to a good start there, leading 19. 11 in that ball game. They're about the midway point of the first quarter. All of uh, Bailey's fouls have either been on screens or trying to take charges. Yeah, it's a characteristic of an inexperienced player, isn't it? I'm sure he'll learn or he has to. <laughs> Kick to the corner. Oh, there didn't look to be any room there. I'm not quite sure how Shogwa squeezed that in. Wow. The ability there to not only drive the six for eight forward, but then the ability to adjust and arrange his body to morph it into a basket. Did Ulf get a touch on that? Yes, he did. It'll be an inline ball with five seconds to go. David Ulf has been a difference to this game. His energy on the defensive end has been impactful. And that's a basket saving interflection, uh, deflection there, excuse me. Bailey has it ripped away. Oh, it's thrown back to him. He doesn't get it off in time. Well, sorry, have led by as many as 14, but this one is a one-point game going into the fourth. We'll have the last 10 after this. Out to Whelan, open for the lead. Patrick Whelan back to back threes, and Caledonia are ahead. It had to be Pat Whelan. Steel for the win. No, he removed. Oh, you wag. Wag is jumping in on the buzzer. Just not capitalizing here at the moment. Yeah, and if you're London, you still got to be worried about it as we see another Oh game. my goodness! The behind the back dot coming! Welcome back to Surrey Sports Park. They had to wait for this one, but the team has done well through the first half an hour. Can they see it over the line or will Surrey, uh, sorry, will Cheshire rally and take the win in the fourth? Trying to take the lead in the fourth and they do with the first shot of this quarter. And Cheshire Phoenix are ahead for the first time since the opening exchanges. Wow, we've got a ball game now in this fourth. But Surrey going to have to figure out a way here to settle into this second half because they've struggled. Cooper for three off the mark. Well, I said when third quarter when they were up 10 that they had their opportunity. They get an offensive foul there against uh, 
Rideau, and I think that's his fourth. This time, Elliot Bailey gets it to go in his favor. Credit to the young British player. Put his body in the way. Oh, a little shake of the head, but it is foul number four. They're going to leave him out there. He's got to be careful. Bailey rolling to the hole, not able to lay it in. Driving in, and that's his fifth foul. Back-to-back -back offensive fouls on Le Quincy Rideau, and his day game is done. That is huge, Dan. Huge call, and this puts Cheshire Phoenix in a distant... Oh, goodness me. It's Elliot Bailey, Elliot Bailey again, isn't it? Put his body on the line, gets across. Could have went either way. I think mean, Bailey was still moving. But you see the anguish on the face of the Quincy Rideau's. Look at those numbers today as well. 15 points, seven assists. It's such a big part of the whole offense for the Cheshire Phoenix. And this will be a big blow for coach Ben Thomas. Well, it was a gamble to leave him out there. It didn't pay off. Obviously, if you take a guy out, you lose what he brings to the game. But the risk about him being a risk-reward guy. Oh, he didn't pay off that time. Robinson for three off the mark. Christian into the key. Misses. I mean, we can't quite get his hand to that ball not to pull it in anyway. Hudson has it. Chagua's going to fire up the three, and that is short. And Chagua called for a foul on the rebound. Well, what this is, is a big test now for Jack Hudson, someone who's played in the British Basketball League for multiple seasons, Manchester Giants most recently. But interestingly, he was came up through the lower leagues with teammate David Oof. So Jack Hudson, big opportunity for him here now to lead this team. Well, we'll see Hudson's old team, Manchester, against. That's going to be an offensive foul going against, sorry, against uh, Sheffield. That's an 8-10 tip-off in Sheffield. We'll get to that as soon as this is finished. Yeah, maybe it's be just stay on the perimeter and shoot threes because yeah. everyone's just getting offensive rebounds. Again. Well, what you would say is that's pretty pretty much the same call as the one at Correct. the other end. Correct, yeah. So at least the consistency's there. You see David Ulf just slightly moving his feet on that one as well. Hudson moves it to Kristen in the corner, putting it on the floor, driving in, gets the foul, drops it in. Bonus free throw coming. Big play there from Kristen. Takes him to 11 points personal. Quietly, he's done. Good things here for this Cheshire Phoenix team and went away, went about his business, excuse me, in an efficient way. Surrey are just barren from the offensive end, yet to score in this fourth quarter. They've really had to labor and chug away to get their 14 points in the second half. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? 52 in the first half, 14 in over 12 minutes of the second. Jameson, Wang, no way for him to go, and he's committed a foul. They look so out of sync, don't they? So out of sync. And they're going to have to rectify this yep. sooner rather than later before well, you go back, they were up 14, they were looking comfortable, and it was at that point, you've got to, you've got your foot on the throat, you've got to put it away there. They didn't, and they let Cheshire hang about, and you know a team with the talent that Cheshire has, at some point, is going to get some momentum, and they've had it here. 
So the question now is, can Surrey respond? Down five, Lawrence drawing the foul on that occasion. Looks like a shooting foul. Uh, maybe not, maybe it was a look like he's thrown it to the corner. <laughs> yeah. Lawrence under all sorts of pressure. Jameson trying to keep it alive, but Cheshire gang rebound. Hold on, Lauren Shogwa had the good position. Look, Cheshire aren't exactly free flowing at the moment, but they do look more organized, don't they? And, and, and more, more uh, confident in getting good looks at the rim. At the moment, Scorchers have zero answers. And of course, Cheshire, well, this is the team that. Oh, without their starting point guard. Well, a minute. Scorchers not only have zero answers, they have zero points in this quarter. There's Wang. Robinson. They need this. It doesn't go. Jack with the rebound. Well, this will be some victory for Cheshire if they can see it over the line, given the adversity they faced. Hudson loses the ball, diving on the floor. Right somehow come up with it, he misses. Jack has it now and he forces it home. Wow, that's unbelievable competitiveness there from Aaron Rye, who doesn't get it to go himself, but his extra effort there gets the two points for his teammate. Steal for three, finally four minutes in. They've got their first score in the fourth quarter. Big one there for Josh Steele. 11 points personal for him. And they won't come much bigger than that. Well, I don't know if uh, the referee thought Steele had a nosebleed or something. He was just checking him out. That looked like a pretty invasive uh, examination. <laughs> <It's there>. action, <laughs> yeah. Goodness me. <laughs> Oh, a slip from Wright. He's able to keep possession. He can't get back up. It'd be a travel, but he finds his teammate, Kristen, who knocks down the three. That is a backbreaker for Scorchers there. A near turnover, but instead, Phoenix regain composure and it results in a three. Steal for three. That's short. And oh, Sharkwell could have let that go, but he decides to keep it in play. It's another rebound, Dan. Yeah, a it's a rebound. If he dropped it out of bounds, it would have been a turnover as well. <laughs> Here's Jack for three. Jameson with the board. It's only his second of the game. Wow. Well, he averages 11, so significantly below his averages. Well. Great start to the fourth quarter for Cheshire. Is there a response from Surrey? We will find out right after this break. Skyler White does well to keep the ball from going out of play. Still got the rebound, he passed it to me. So me and Ethan, as he was running down the court, was making like eye connection, like, I'm like, go, go, go. Running, 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 so then boom, foot between my legs and just, do it, and I just had a no look to it. Um, my name is LaQuinta Rito. Um, I play for Chester Phoenix, I'm the point guard. Jazz music is, um, it keeps you calm, helps you find that rhythm that you're looking for. And, you know, the, the term, I have that dog in me, that's me, honestly. Like, 
I don't back down from anybody. Never been, never will. I would prefer doing the assist than scoring because that's the thing about being a point guard is like getting your teammates involved and, and keeping them happy and making yourself happy as well. My play style is about the risk and reward. So it's like, what's the point of like playing if you're not going to take that risk? Because the risk is always going to be with a bigger reward. I want to be the best version of me. I'm making connection with my teammates and make brotherhood. The goal is to win. Welcome back to Surrey Sports Park. Roy Gardner and his coaching staff trying to plot a way to a win here. Having led by as many as 14. They've struggled for offense in the second half. Just 17 second half points in 15 minutes. Wang at the free throw line. Cuts it to six. Hudson crosses midcourt. Hudson fires up a three and it rattles in. Wow, Jack, Jack Hudson's been thrust into this game to replace Riddle, who's been fouled out, and he has responded. The big three there. Offensive foul, Kristen getting the uh, praises from his teammates. It's another offensive foul. I feel like we've seen a lot. He's, I think his foot is above the line. Wow. And uh, in FIBA rules, that's okay as long as you're not touching the line. Excellent play then. Another turnover for Scorchers. But Rye just forcing his way to the basket. Wow, he's looking a little bit more like the Rye we've been accustomed to seeing. Well, Hudson forcing the turnover, running back the layup, and out of nowhere, they're up 12. Disastrous for the Surrey Scorchers out of that timeout. Well, Renaud is really enjoying what Hudson is bringing to the game now. And they're all smiles on the Cheshire bench. A few scowls about 10 minutes ago in this game, but it's all turned around, hasn't it? It has. A great pass there as well from Rye. And Jack Hudson, what an excellent contribution he's made. Again, thrown in the deep end. And look at that down. It's 27 to 7. Is that graphic correct? That's unbelievable. It is, unfortunately for Zuri, very accurate. They've had uh, 16 turnovers, but they've been turned into 27 points, which is an incredible rate. And, uh, only 10 turnovers for the Phoenix. Anytime you get above a point a turnover, you're doing really well. So if you get to where they are, point and a half a turnover, that is off the scale good. No, it's remarkable. So Cheshire Phoenix lead the league in points from turnovers. Uh, and they average 17 points per game. 27 in this game, and the game's not even finished yet. It's re no, remarkable. Well, four to play here. Justin Robinson brings it forward. They've got to have a response now. Robinson taking it to the rim. They're two or three plays away from this one being done. If they can't make some inroads here, sorry. Kristen 
come down to Rye. Double team comes, he passes out of it. What an assist that is. Incredible, and the longer this game goes on, Trisha Phoenix just growing confidence and the complete opposite to the sorry Scorchers. Again, another turnover. Steal from Hudson. It's the tenth steal of the game for the Phoenix. Here's Rye again. Sam Robinson on his back. Trying to force his way through. Jump ball is the call. But this is... We've just seen him almost shaking the rust off as the game goes through. Yep. That's just a great pass. Yep. These are good minutes for him in this sort of situation, just to try and get himself back to where he was. There is no substitute for being out there, particularly in late game situations. Trying to end a 9-0 run, Robinson misses the three. You could just feel the air go out of the building as well. And 9-0 run there in the last two minutes. And that was a shot that has to go down. Yeah, it is, yeah. Hudson for three, not this time. Robinson out to Mohammed. Cooper top of the key, tough shot, knocks it down. Yeah, nice use of the pump fake there and pull up from Cooper. But still no pressure. S -s -s Cheshire been able to jog the ball off. This is, you know, this is emergency stations yeah. here now for the Surrey, but they're not reacting like that. It's still plenty of time to make this uncomfortable for the Phoenix. Right, stepping underneath. Not quite the finish, and Mohamed able to crowd him out of the rebound. Good on board defense there for Mohamed. Lawrence, good on board defense Excellent. there from Jack. And Excellent. Rye almost kept it in play. Maceo Jack's on yeah, board defense. Amazing, Excellent. wasn't it? Latest from. Leicester, Newcastle up seven there. There's a block as well from Jack. Another good defensive play from him. Wow. Well, time on their side. They're going to take some air out of the ball. What a victory this will be for the Cheshire Phoenix. Down as many as 14. Point guard fouls out. Got sportsman likes and technicals going against them. Spent forever on a bus. But they've somehow ground one out here. Jack with the step away. There was a whistle on the rebound. There was a foul for a push. And Shogwa went for it. A minute to play. Coming up shortly. 8.15 Sheffield Sharks against the Manchester Giants. We'll be joining that game as soon as this one has come to its conclusion. Well, they've had a long old journey down as well, the uh, Knicks fans, but it's been a pretty good week for them. They get to go to Manchester and smash their local rivals. <laughs> they come down here and come from behind and win. Life is good if you are on the Cheshire Phoenix. Don't forget, Ant, you've still got to pick your player of the game. Some good performances out there. Yeah, they have. It's a difficult one just because they've got... Oh, what a rejection from Maceo Jack! <laughs> Volleyball spike from Maceo Jack. Robinson in the corner, rims out for three. And Cheshire will just dribble this one down, I think. Well, they would have, but foul has been called first for Teo and Dengby. Oh, Maceo Jack. Look at this. Dad's a volleyball player, I think. That was definitely <laughs> a spike. Incredible. The athleticism to 
be able to get up that high to spike it that hard. Well, they trailed by as many as 14. They may win by more than that. They have the lead, the biggest of the game at 15. And this second half has been a complete turnaround. The main difference, really, I mean, Cheshire are about the same number of points they scored in the first half. But sorry, just fell off a cliff, just 21 second half points. And that's another block. Bodies all over the place, and the referee's going to stop it because I think uh, Kristen got a whack in the face. Well, nobody's happy with the outcome, but Kristen had the worst of it. Well, not quite how they wanted this to end. I think he's all right. He's just uh, regaining himself. He's back to his feet. Well, they're going to take him out just to be sure. Let's see if we can see what happens. He's gone up. He's got the block. His own teammate has banged into him, and he's just landed a little hard. Yeah. So he's had a great game, though, uh, Ant, your player of the game. Yeah, I thought he was uh, quietly chipping away. Leads this team in scoring their 18 points. Six rebounds to go with that as well. And I think he was real positive for them throughout the game. Well, deflected away, but it'll be an end-line ball. Well, not quite how he wanted to be named player of the game, I think, but uh, he'll <laughs> take it nonetheless. A lot back to Rye, playing for the points here. Rye taking it to the rim and laying it in. And Surrey Scorchers let another one get away. Led by as many as 14, lost by 18 in the end. But what a result for Ben Thomas and the Cheshire Phoenix. A very, very difficult day for them but they've managed to find their way over the line. Yeah, very disappointing. This is a game that you have to win, really. The adversity that the Cheshire Phoenix had to face today was insurmountable from start to finish, but they are the team that got stronger as the game went on. Even their starting point guard got fouled out, and they just seemed to grow in confidence and, and togetherness after the result of that big loss certainly, here for Surrey. Certainly was a tremendous victory for the Cheshire Phoenix. Sheffield Manchester coming up shortly, but for now, goodbye.